On a warm afternoon, on the 23rd of August 1972, 20-year-old Jody Loomis left her Bothell, Washington home and rode her white 10-speed bike to a stable to ride her horse, which was six miles away. It was the first time Loomis had ridden a bike to the stable alone. Other times, family members usually drove her. She diverted onto a remote dirt road, and about halfway through her travels, she was ambushed, and her attacker violated her, and then shot her in the head. 30 minutes later, around 5.30pm, a couple who had been driving a car through a wooded road were stopped in the tracks by a fallen tree. When the man got out, he discovered Loomis's partially disrobed body laying in the Mill Creek woods. Her head was bleeding from a gunshot wound as she clutched at her bra, unable to speak. Barely alive, they picked her up without stopping to cover up her body and hurried her to the nearest hospital. Once they arrived, it was too late and she had passed away. A girl working at a family fruit stand told authorities that she saw her earlier, wearing a crop top, blouse and boots that she borrowed from her 12 year old sister. An autopsy suggested that the attacker fired a 22 caliber round at a downward angle above her right ear after violating her. It also showed that she was trying to get dressed and there's a patch of dirt stuck to her skin beneath her underwear, a sign that she was in a serious hurry to flee from the man. The case was investigated and evidence was collected from the crime scene, but with little to go on, the case went cold and remained that way for decades. In 2008, authorities decided to reopen the case as part of the initiative by the sheriff's office to solve the matter. The boots Jody was wearing on the day were sent to a crime lab. They noticed that on one of the boots, there was a tiny stain on it from the bodily fluids of the suspect. A DNA sample was extracted from it, but it didn't have any hits on the CODIS DNA database. In 2018, forensic experts teamed up with Parabon. Through genetic genealogy, public ancestry websites were visited to narrow down the search for the suspect. Using the DNA from the stain found on Loomis's boot, they were able to zero in and identify Terence Miller as the suspect. Miller was a retired heavy equipment operator who liked to play golf and bowl. He also ran a ceramics shop with his wife in Edmonds, Washington. The investigators began watching Miller and eventually they were able to retrieve a coffee cup that he threw out at a casino. They were then able to retrieve a DNA sample from the cup which positively matched the DNA on the boot. Police arrested and charged Miller in April of 2019 for taking Loomis's life. Miller would have been 30 years old at the time of the offence, and they didn't know each other. At the time his trial began, in November of 2019, he was out free on a $1 million bond. Miller grew increasingly worried that the DNA evidence was solid and would probably lead him to spending the rest of his days in jail. At 10am on the 9th of November 2020, just hours before the jury convicted Miller of taking Loomis's life, the 78-year-old defendant's body was discovered at his home by the sheriff's deputies. It was believed that he took his own life because he couldn't face the prospect of spending the rest of his life in prison. Prosecutor Craig Matheson said that the authorities regret the way the matter ended. He added, We got an answer. Whether Mr. Miller was there or not, it does not diminish the verdict. <laughs>